Hi, and welcome to Test Talk. I'm Ed Mobley. I'm here with my colleague, uh, Justin Hankey. And today we're going to talk about what, you know, many people consider almost the, the third rail of, of testing uh, topic discussions, and that's around the use and, and placement of, of RPA versus traditional test automation tools. I mean, lots of discussion around that, uh, you know, with our clients. And then in our video, test automation drivers and challenges, uh, you know, we alluded to that a bit, but in this video, we'll, we'll, we'll dig a little deeper. So, so Justin, what are, what are you hearing out there? Sure, so uh, RPA, Robotics Process Automation, is gaining a lot of popularity. Um, you know, one of the reasons uh, that, that I've heard is uh, it enables less technical people to be able to, to automate processes. And it's kind of a natural uh, interest behind why not use that for test automation, right? And in general, it makes sense, uh, you know, to make the use out of the, uh, the, the investment you've made in the tools and, and things like that. Um, especially if you're part of an organization that maybe doesn't have people with a lot of those technical skills. Um, test audit, the more traditional test automation tools have been around for a bit longer, but there's a lot of overlap between them and, and how they work and what they can do and things like that. Um, so, uh, you know, where, what I've seen uh, work well for RPA in, in a test automation context are things that span across multiple applications. So if uh, you have some kind of uh, registration process that then you get an email you have to click on and then it opens another page and then you know there's like transitioning back and forth between processes, it makes sense. Um, and RPA works really well for those things where, where some other more traditional test automation tools uh, struggle a little bit. Um, but what's missing a lot of times from the RPA uses are um, it's missing the testing context in the sense that RPA tools are intended to complete a, an automated process. It's not necessarily built to report passes and fails and take screenshots and do all these validation type things that, um, that traditional test automation tools are built to do, right? And, and integrate with test management tools and like all these kind of core pieces of testing are, are missing from a lot of those RPA tools. You probably could build it and a lot of RPA tools allow kind of calling external code and different things that happen and whatever, but that's just not their original purpose, right? So. Yeah, and, 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 and what I'm seeing is that, because on the surface, you know, folks might say, okay, RPA is more geared toward business process automation and your traditional off-the-shelf testing tools are more geared toward testing for, for the reasons you, you describe. But I'm seeing there's, there's definitely some overlap there. Mm -hmm. Because for example, in, in the context of, of traditional testing, you may use an RPA tool to perhaps pull from a legacy system. Or sometimes, you know, whether it's uh, it's particular transactional data, or whether you need to, uh, you know, bring in uh, more than just a few transactions. Maybe it's actually help you build your your test data. So it definitely appears that there's a, a degree of, of overlap. And I don't see people just talking about these two tool sets in separate encampments. So they they've realized that there definitely is. Uh, an opportunity to, to use them in, in a complementary fashion. Yeah, I think that's right. Um, you know, certainly at, at the very least, if you are kind of invested or interested in, in using both in, in kind of their traditional contexts, um, at the very least there there's things that can be learned about how to automate processes that would be similar and sometimes even uh, what you've leveraged RPA for in a production scenario that might also be a good baseline for what you should automate in a testing scenario, right? So if, if you've automated these 10 things in production, that's, uh, and it's been worth that automation process, that's probably also something that is worth automating in a testing context too, right? To make sure that not only the process works the way you expect it to, but because the tools operate very similarly, they both identify objects in a similar ways. They both interact with objects and, and applications in similar ways. So um, if, if it 
works in a testing context, then it should also work in, in an RPA production context and, and vice versa. Yeah, because a, a traditional testing tool, it, it, it does its thing. And like you said, it can take screenshots and, and uh, give you more in-depth reporting. Well, with RPA, let's say that you, you were to use it in a, in a more traditional testing context. If I hear you right, you're saying it, it really doesn't have that rich level of reporting and, in, and instead it, your indication that, say, a test failed is, is the bot just broke. Or, or yeah. is it a little more sophisticated than that? Yeah, I mean, you, just like anything, right? Like you could, bots could be like infinitely complicated in the sense that you could add, you know, deal with all this error handling and reporting and like you could build all of that, but it's just with the kind of the more traditional test automation tools, like that's just a part of what they do. It's just already there. And, um, you, you know, I think that Selenium is, is one of the more popular kind of well-known open source tools that's just openly and freely available, but sometimes that's a little scary, and so that's why people feel like they need to jump to RPA, but you know, there, there are tools that exist in between as well that are t test automation tools, right, that, that are no code or, or less code type things that enable less technical testers or users uh, to be able to accomplish test automation without necessarily the the technical pieces behind Selenium and, and those things that people might feel intimidated by. Yeah, and I've, I've seen some of these traditional uh, test automation tool vendors. They they know what's going on, uh, on on the RPA side of the house, and they've even implemented capabilities. Either they have tools that are advertised as being scriptless, mm -hmm. and they also have a record and, and playback capabilities yeah. where uh, a business user can go in there and it, it it's like okay you know press start and do your stuff and stop and then it, it actually feeds in into the the automation tool and you know I've also seen uh, instances where a traditional tool was selected that does require some type of, of coding experience it works very well but then when they try and democratize that tool it's like hey we selected this tool the developers love it but then you realize the business analysts are not in any position to use it. So, so then they're they're in the situation where they need to reevaluate. Okay, what tool are we going to use if we want to really democratize uh, either the, you know the building of a regression suite, the running of a regression suite, uh, you know, beyond uh, just development. Yeah, that that's very true, and um, you know I think people also kind of have this concept that you know because RPA is one of the newest you know shiny object type things that um, that it, it doesn't come with any problems that it it's like a magic bullet for you know automating things um, but just like any tool or, or any you know technology it's only as good as how it's implemented right so uh, you know I've seen bots implemented in both a, uh, a testing context and a production context that are constantly breaking, you know, not very stable, do the wrong things, don't, you know, perform as expected, all the same things that sometimes people um, hear about test automation scripts um, that, that we talked about in the, the testing uh, challenges and drivers video. Um, so it's not that RPA solves all those problems for you. It's not, it's not, uh, it's not a solution to avoid those things. It still has to be used and, and implemented it in a, in a useful way. Yeah, I think the, the key thing is, is both these tool sets are going to continue to evolve. You're going to have vendors that are going to continue to want to differentiate themselves and, and maybe a traditional tool vendor in order to you know, ward off some of the, the competition from say an RPA vendor may even embed some, some mm -hmm. RPA capabilities. and. So I think the real lesson here is that you know as you look at you know testing or automation, whether it's business process automation, whether it's traditional testing, is that you're going to have to constantly evaluate the tools that are out there in their context and, and recognize there's just no magic bullet, and uh, it's very likely that the the conversation you know, one would have a year or two ago around that may have yeah. different results than one we would have now. And certainly, 
you know, two years in, in the future. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and in, in the video previously about the challenges drivers, innovation was one of those things we talked about, right, is that you can't use tools from 10 years ago to solve today's problems because technology changes, there's new capabilities and things that are out there, and that holds true here as well, right? Because just because the, the current state of tools and their use cases, um, you know, might lend itself better one way or the other, uh, like you said, like a year from now that could change. So don't uh, get stuck on a tool for uh, either tool or any tool for a, an extended period of time because you're probably going to be missing out on different innovations and, and opportunities to do things better. And, and likewise, it don't necessarily get stuck on you know, whether it's an open source tool or whether it's a vendor tool because, you know, in the case of a vendor tool, okay, you, you, you may have licensing costs, but what a lot of folks underestimate is, yes, open source doesn't have the licensing restrictions, but what is it going to cost you to, to, to build to, it and do everything you need to yeah, do? Yeah, for, for all the, the care and the care and feeding. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, so if, if some of the folks uh, in the audience were looking for a, a definitive answer, uh, we weren't able to give that because, quite honestly, it, it depends, right? It depends. It's not black on, and white. Yeah, it's, it's it's not black and white. A lot of a lot of gray areas. But uh, we are going to explore this conversation further uh, in our uh, white paper, uh, which will be linked in the uh, description below the video. Again, really appreciate the time you've uh, spent with us on Test Talk. Until next time.